All right, we are in part seven now, and this is the finale. So part seven is mostly about tips and tricks, or the do's and don'ts that I would like to share with you so that you don't have to go through the same mistake that I did. So here we go. Tip number one, do not install Mac OS, Linux, and Windows on the same disk. Well, installing Linux alongside Mac OS is totally fine, but allocating space with this utility for Windows installation or sharing macOS or Linux partition with Windows really is a bad idea. It just doesn't work. So this is important. You need one disk for macOS installation and it cannot be resized or shared with Windows 11. And then you need another separate disk for Windows 11 installation alone and it cannot be resized or shared with other OSs ever. Mark my words, two separate disks for Mac OS and Windows 11, but you can still piggyback Linux installation onto Mac OS. All right, tip number two. When it comes to Linux installation, the best way to do it is also to have a separate disk for Linux OS installation alone. But if you're in a situation like I was, I didn't have extra disks with me, so I had no option but to resize macOS partition for Linux installation. However, do not use gparted to resize macOS disk. Instead, use this utility to do so. Please watch part 5 if you want to know more details about it. Alright, next. Tip number 3. Do you remember how I did install macOS Pixar with the help of OpenCore Legacy Patcher? In order to get started, I needed to have at least a supported macOS version installed in my Mac Pro, and that would be macOS High Sierra. So I installed macOS High Sierra and then created macOS Pixar USB installer in High Sierra, and then I managed to install macOS Pixar on a separate disk. OpenCore took over the boot menu and everything went well, except that I made one mistake of booting macOS High Sierra while the macOS Pixar disk was still in the system. I noticed something had happened with the boot menu icons. This is how it looked like before booting up High Sierra, and this is how it looked like after booting up High Sierra. What the heck? It turned out that there is a serious bug in macOS High Sierra that corrupted the pre-boot volume of macOS Big Sur. There is no patch available to fix it. So make sure that if you need to boot up High Sierra for whatever reason, remove Big Sur disk off your system so that High Sierra does not corrupt Big Sur's pre-boot volume. So please keep this in mind. So in conclusion, here are the list of don'ts. Do not use this utility to create, resize, or allocate space for multiple OSs because Windows doesn't go along with it. Do not use Gparted to create, resize, or allocate space for Linux OS onto existing Windows 11 disk or partition. And do not boot macOS High Sierra while your macOS Pixar disk is still in the system. And now, here are the list of do's. Do use this utility only to create, resize, or allocate space for Linux OS installation on the existing Mac OS disk or partition. And I do recommend that the very best way to install triple boot Mac OS, Linux, and Windows on a Mac Pro is to do it on a separate disks. All right, so that's all for the tips and tricks. So if you're here right now and you don't seem to understand what I'm talking about, then go ahead and click on the playlist of installing triple boot Mac OS, Linux, and Windows that you can find here somewhere on the screen, or you can also find it in the description down below. Please watch the entire series and hopefully it helps you to get started with your triple boot setup on your machine. So here is the bonus part. 
Remember in part 6 when we did install Windows 11 manually and there was this step that actually altered the EFI folder within the USB installer? That step actually rendered the USB installer unusable for future use. It's not going to be able to boot any longer. Meaning that if you need to use this USB installer again, you may have to go through the entire process of creating a USB installer with Rufus just like what I did in part 1 of this series. However, there is a shortcut to make this USB installer usable again. And here is how to fix it. Boot into Windows 11 and restart into safe mode by pressing and holding shift before clicking the restart button. This will show some options aside from booting into Windows itself. Choose Troubleshoot, Advanced Option, and Common Prompt. Now insert the USB installer and we are going to do everything in reverse. Change into D drive. Remove completely the current EFI folder. Rename the original EFI backup as EFI. And then exit from there. Reboot the computer. And that's it. So now your Windows 11 USB installer should be able to boot and can be used to install Windows on other machines. Okay, so before I let you go, I may have one thing that may intrigue you to watch my next video. So what if in the future, you run out of space on your Windows 11 disk, so you go buy a larger disk, and do you really need to have to go through the entire installation again? Or is there a better way to do it? Well, glad you asked. There is actually a way to clone your existing Windows 11 disk, preserve everything as is, and then restore it onto a new disk. And that, my friend, will be in my next video. So stay tuned, subscribe to the channel, and thank you for watching the entire series. Be safe and have a good one.